Hi everyone, this is Ramya from Nursing Tutor channel. In this video, we will see about celiac disease. We will see definition of celiac disease, process and risk factors, signs and symptoms, pathophysiology, diagnostic procedures, treatment for celiac disease. Thank you. First, we will see the definition of celiac disease. Celiac disease is a serious autoimmune disease that occurs in genetically predisposed people where the ingestion of gluten leads to damage in the small intestine. It is estimated to affect 1 in 100 people worldwide but only about 30% are properly diagnosed. Celiac disease is a chronic disease of small intestine characterized by intolerance of gluten, the protein component of wheat, oats, barley, causing malabsorption. When people with celiac disease eat gluten, a protein found in wheat, rye and barley, their body mounts an immune response that attacks the small intestine. These attacks lead to damage on the villi, small finger-like projections that line the small intestine that promote nutrient absorption. When the villi get damaged, nutrients cannot be absorbed properly into the body. Causes and risk factors for the celiac disease The exact cause is unknown. Celiac disease is caused by immune system's abnormal response to gluten. Immune system reacts to usually harmless protein as if it is a threat to body and produces antibodies against it. This causes inflammation in gut which damages villi and leads to the symptoms of celiac disease. Scientists believe Celiac disease mostly affect people who have certain gene changes, but not everyone who has the mutation will get the disease. Doctors think celiac disease can be triggered by the things that are stressful to body and immune system, such as viral infection, surgery, pregnancy or emotional trauma. Signs and symptoms of celiac disease The symptoms of celiac disease can vary greatly. They may be different in children and adults. Digestive symptoms of adults include diarrhea, fatigue, weight loss, bloating and gas, abdominal pain, nausea and vomiting, and constipation. However, more than half of the adults with the celiac disease have symptoms that are not related to the digestive system, including anemia usually from iron deficiency due to decreased iron absorption, loss of bone density called osteoporosis or softening of bones called osteomalacia, itchy, blistery skin rash called dermatitis herpetiformis, Mouth ulcers, headache and fatigue, nervous system injury including numbness and tingling in the feet and hands, possible problems with balance and cognitive impairment, joint pain, reduced functioning of the spleen, known hyposplenism, elevated liver enzymes. Children with celiac disease are more commonly than adults to have digestive problems including nausea and vomiting, chronic diarrhea, swollen belly, constipation, gas, pain, foul smelling stools. Inability to absorb nutrients might be result in failure to thrive for infants, damage to tooth enamel, weight loss, anemia, irritability, short stature, delayed puberty, neurological symptoms including attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, learning disabilities, headaches, 
lack of muscle coordination and seizures. Pathophysiology for celiac disease. Intolerance of the gliadin fraction of gluten causes damage to the epithelial cell of villi. This causing atrophy of the intestinal villi and impaired absorption of potential nutrients. Initially, fat absorption is impaired. Later, protein and carbohydrate absorption is also impaired. Diagnostic procedures for celiac disease. Serologic test, intestinal biopsies, genetic test are the diagnostic procedures for celiac disease. Health professionals most often use serologic test and intestinal biopsies to diagnose celiac disease. If the serologic test suggests that a patient could have the celiac disease, healthcare professionals should order intestinal biopsies to confirm the diagnosis. Ordering serologic test is typically the first step in diagnosing celiac disease. In addition to using serologic test to help diagnose celiac disease, healthcare professionals may use them to monitor how well patients are following a gluten-free diet. Serologic tests for celiac disease include tissue transglutaminase, immunoglobulin A and TTG immunoglobulin G test, endomycial antibody IgA test, deaminated gliadin peptide IgA and DGP IgG test. Second one, intestinal biopsies. If serologic tests suggest that a patient could have the celiac disease, healthcare professionals should order an upper GI endoscopy with biopsies of duodenum, including the duodenal bulb and distal duodenum to confirm the diagnosis. Third one, genetic test. People with celiac disease almost always have at least one of two groups of human leukocyte antigen gene variants that encode the following serotype equivalence HLA DQ2.5 or HLA DQ8. About 95% of people with celiac disease have HLA DQ2.5.1. Among the 5% most have HLA DQ8.1. A very small percentage have other genetic variants such as DQ2.2 which are very rarely associated with celiac disease. Treatment for celiac disease Dietary management A strict lifelong gluten-free diet is the only way to manage the celiac disease. Removing gluten from diet will typically Reduce inflammation in small intestine, causing patients to feel better and eventually children tend to heal more quickly than adults. Vitamin and mineral supplements. If anemia or nutritional deficiencies are severe, supplements may be recommended including copper, folic acid, iron, vitamin B12, vitamin D, vitamin K, and zinc. Vitamins and supplements are usually taken in pill form. If patient's digestive tract has trouble absorbing vitamins, then we might be able to get them by injection. Medications to control intestinal inflammation. If patient's small intestine is severely damaged or patient have refractory celiac disease, Steroids may be recommended to control inflammation. Steroids can ease severe symptoms of celiac disease while the intestine heals. Other drugs such as azathioprine or risonide might be used treating dermatitis herpetiformis. If the patient have this skin rash, a medicine called Dapson may be recommended in addition to a gluten-free diet. Dapsone is taken by mouth. If patient take Dapsone, 
patient will need regular blood test to check for side effects. Refractory celiac disease With the refractory celiac disease, the small intestine does not heal well. Refractory celiac disease can be quite serious and there is currently no proven treatment. If patient have refractory celiac disease, patient may want to seek medical care at a specialized center. Nursing management for the celiac disease Administer IV fluids and electrolytes as prescribed. Provide a gluten-free diet. Provide vitamin, iron and mineral supplements. Protect the child from infection. Record the weight daily. Explain the need for frequent follow-up supervision. Administer medications as per order. Monitor intake output chart. Thank you everyone.